Okay, some people have asked me to make a video showing how I use Roll20 to project virtual maps onto my TV screen for my table. So here it is. Uh, first thing is you have to make two separate Roll20 accounts, one for the players and one for the DM. And the reason why you have to have two separate accounts is so that you can uncover the fog of war and see the whole map, whereas the players will only see what you uncover. So the great thing is Roll20 is free and to set up two accounts is not a problem. And as you can see, I have a number of modules here and the current one we're playing is Curse of Strahd. So after you set up your Roll20, um, one of the great things about this is that there are um, a lot of helpful um, videos that Roll20 already has and you can search those. They're great tutorials and that's basically how I learned how to use Roll20. Uh, and so I'm not going to show you how to use the tokens or go through the whole, um, uh, all of the capabilities of Roll20. It's pretty powerful and it's meant for people who want to play online. Uh, so it's a virtual tabletop, but I only use it for map projection. So that's what I'm gonna be showing through this video. Also, um, I use Photoshop um, Elements to modify all of my files, but you're going to need some kind of graphics uh, modifier. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, GIMP is a free program that you can download and you can do pretty much everything I'm going to do with Photoshop Elements uh, through GIMP. So you can download this uh, if you don't currently have one. Uh, also, one of the things is I had to, um, I was in process of making the Curse of Strahd map uh, because unfortunately the new module that uh, Wizards of the Coast came out with um, they don't have two-dimensional maps they have a 3D isometric map of the castle uh, and uh, that's not going to work on a tabletop where you're moving miniatures around and so I went online and couldn't find anything so I was in process of making my own map and just drawing basically on this grid but then while I was at, while I was doing this um, someone sent me a link to find some really good uh, maps that someone made uh, and I will put this um, link in the comment section below but this is a fan made uh, maps of Castle Ravenloft and you're, you're just gonna um, click on these maps uh, and basically right click uh, save image as and save it to your computer so that's basically what you're gonna do and he has uh, every floor now this is the first version of Castle Ravenloft and so there's some things that are represented on these maps that isn't in the new module published module but that's okay um, it's fairly close and it's only some of the elements so I'm definitely going to be using all of these maps and all I did was download all these onto my hard drive uh, and they are pretty good quality as you can see. Um, so once you download all of your maps off of the internet, the ones that you want, uh, you need to edit it and so here I have um, Photoshop Elements and I'm going to grab my map and open it and you need to resize these because they're too large. These are print quality and um, you're just going to use up all of your uh, free space on Roll20 uh, by uploading these very large maps. And so what you do is just go to image and hit resize. Hit image size and keep the resolution at 72. At least that's my default around 75. It doesn't really matter the resolution. Um, what I do though is I change the width uh, and the height and I'll make it be about three or four thousand and that will in and of itself significantly shrink it down um, and uh, you can you can sort of uh, zoom in on here and see that the quality hasn't really suffered a whole lot um, even though you shrunk it down in size and so go ahead and save it uh, resave it uh, as a JPEG uh, yes I want to replace it and basically with the compression, the JPEG compression, I make it be around um, one, one meg. Uh, so about this is right, uh, a little bit less. Yeah, that seems good. So I hit okay 
and close it out. And that's what I do with all of uh, the image files. So go ahead and go back to um, Roll20. And what you want to do is you have this pull down menu. I already have all of Mike Schley's um, images on here. I already uploaded them. I did shrink them down. Uh, so this is one of the buildings. Um, and I do have the fog of war enabled on here right now. That's why it's a little bit dim. Uh, but you want to add a new page. And so you click on here, create new page. And when you create a page and you have all these maps already in there, um, it appears on the very end over here. Uh, and so I already created this. Um, and the default page will be, uh, and in order to um, change the settings of the page, you can't do it here. You have to go uh, into this menu up here and click on the page settings, the toolbar up here. And the default is 25 by 25, and I usually make it 50 by 50 to fit the map. And that is totally dependent on what your map size is, but I usually start around 50 by 50. And then I also make sure my grid is enabled. Uh, the diagonals, this really doesn't matter since we're not using the tokens in-game. Um, and then uh, the color is the default gray, so I've changed the color to white and I've increased the opacity um, all the way up. Uh, and that's the color of the lines. And the reason why, um, I might change the color later. Uh, do not enable the fog of war yet as you're still working on the file. So once you set up your page, uh, go ahead and go back to the file and drag it over and drop it right onto the page. And it will upload here. Oh, um, I forgot to tell you, before you do this, make sure that you're dropping it onto um, map and background. So the default is objects and tokens. If you drop it onto objects and tokens, the map is like super small because it'll fit into a square. So go over here, click on here, and make sure you're on map and background before you drop these um, maps and images in there. Um, and then I'm going to have to scroll in to make the map bigger. So go ahead and uh, see if I can get the corner. There it is, right there. And then just blow it up like this. And what you're gonna notice is that um, on these maps off the internet, there are uh, lines drawn in uh, for here. And I have made the size of my map too small to fit it. And so I'll just have to ink. I'm going to blow it up first as big as possible and hold down Alt or else it will snap onto the grid and you don't want that to happen. So in order to match um, the squares from the original map to the squares in Roll20, um, there's two ways to do this. If you right click on here and go down to advanced, there is a button that says um, align to grid. Um, and so basically what you can do is uh, find a three by three um, in the map. Oops, hold on. So let's see here. So the, the black lines here from the original artist who made this. What you want to do is um, click and drag a three by three. So I'll just I'll just uh, come over here and try to grab a three by three. Now this wasn't the best spot, um, but as long as it's approximate, um, that's good. Uh, let's do thirty four here. So align to grid, and it automatically sort of um, puts it in a place where the square should be pretty close. But as you can see, it's not a perfect uh, matchup. And as I mentioned before, now the map is off of the uh, base page. So I need to increase the size of the base page by going back into settings, page settings. And let's increase this by 100 by 70. Maybe that'll be enough. So it increased um, to fit the rest of 
the map. And so one of the things I realized is that the squares in the map are decorative. They're actually not five foot squares. And so, um, and in the book, um, those squares are actually 10 feet. So I want five feet square. So that's what I did here on the map was to create five foot squares and I adjusted them and moved the map around so that it lined up with the walls. And so, yeah, I got fooled into thinking that the squares inside of the map that this artist made were five foot squares, but they're actually not. So, yeah, as long as the map fits this way, then um, you're pretty much done. And I will show you what it looks like on the screen. Uh, before I do that, um, let me show you two tools that I really do use. Uh, one is the turn order. And the way that you get that is uh, go click over here and that will produce this box. Uh, click down here and you can type in add custom label. You know, if, I, if I wanted to add um, um, monster here, you just add that uh, and it will automatically stick it here. You need to cr make the box bigger in order to see all of it. Let's see how it put the monster in there. And then um, after everyone rolls their dice, you just um, put in the value here. Um, and then hit descending and it will show you who is first and second and you can uh, drag people up and down uh, according to their ace um, their uh, dexterity whoever has a higher dexterity in case of ties and so you can drag drag these characters up and down uh, and then you can just throw these guys away when you don't need it anymore so this initiative order actually does show up on the player's map and so that's super helpful for them to know who's going when. Um, the other tool that I use is actually the jukebox so come up here and click on that and you can actually hear a little bit. Uh, well. So what I here let me turn up the line. There. And then here's some epic music. So yeah all, all of these are sort of horror themed. Okay, so here we are at the table. Um, I have this computer plug is going to be plugged into the TV and this is the player's account uh, and you can hear music coming from it. Um, oh, before I do that, I do have a piece of plexiglass. People commented on the video whether or not I had plexiglass. I definitely do to protect the surface. And I did put in boxes right there, electrical boxes. So uh, I actually did that a while back. So just know that that's what I did. Um, and to set this up, basically, um, I have my HDMI cable here. Uh, plug this in to my HDMI. Uh, and then just uh, turn on the TV. Basically, the image will now um, be replicated onto the TV. Uh, so what um, you want to do at this point is have the DM computer be logged in um, over here. And like I mentioned, um, I like having a fog of war. So let me go ahead and drag the player uh, ribbon over to the map that I want. And uh, when you have a lot of maps, you gotta scroll through uh, a lot of it. And then here's the file that we just edited and uploaded. And uh, as you can see, I have not turned on the fog of war, so the players can see the whole map, which I don't want them to do. So uh, how you enable the fog of war is, uh, again, just go to the page settings and come down to fog of war and hit enabled. 
and you can adjust how um, opaque it is for the GM. So once you enable it, um, as you can see, the player screen totally went dark, and you can reveal areas um, pretty much by going over here. Hold on, turn order is in the way. And going over here and reveal areas, I, I do polygon reveal. And you basically, what that does is it enables you to click on these corners and make it any sort of shape that you want. And so you reveal areas and then when you're ready, you right click and it reveals that area. So uh, you can reveal rooms as you're going. And I will show you here. The reason why it's not showing up on the TV is because you have to have the players scroll out like this and then scroll down to where you revealed uh, the thing and so have the player sort of scroll um, to where they need it to be and then uh, they can scale the map so that the miniatures actually fit uh, onto each of these squares. And so right now, the squares are a little bit small, uh, and you can adjust that um, by again using the slider uh, and having it, moving it up, oh, that's smaller, like that. So these are these fit uh, plenty big, and that's pretty much how you play. And then you have the initiative tracker right here, so they know who's gonna go next, and that is pretty much how you implement Roll20 on a digital table.